when you come to embroider the dress, um, you can either do it completely freehand or um, you can make some circles on the fabric um, using these templates as a guide. So um, if you want to do the latter, if you want a guide to work with, what I um, am going to do is just poke a hole in the middle of the template just with your pencil, squish it round a bit so that you've got a circle there and you want to do this before um, you before you stick the template before you iron the template um, to the felt okay so then you would just take your um, paper scissors and just trim off any excess bits at the back there the circles don't have to be perfect at all um, the idea with this embroidery is that it should look quite organic um, so it really doesn't need to be perfect at all as I say you can opt to um, to stitch the embroidery completely freehand if you like um, but if you if you want to do if you want a guide then you should um, poke holes in there, just do the central bit, you don't need to worry about the outer circle um, or the uh, lines for the leaves, um, they are just there as a reference point, um, but you poke out the circles, trim off the excess and then iron it um, to your felt just like we did in step two um, and then you can cut out your felt and uh, go over the bottom with pinking shears, so I'm just going to do that now and I will um, come back and show you what to do next after that step. I meant to say in that previous step that if you want to or if you've got one you can use a single hole punch to cut these holes out more easily. Um, it doesn't make any difference, it will do the same job either way, it's just a bit quicker if you have one. Um, so here I have um, cut out the felt around the template, the template is still stuck to the felt. Um, that was after obviously I had ironed it um, to stick it and I'd uh, cut out these holes. Um, what I'm going to do is use my water erasable marker um, to mark the centres of these holes. Again it doesn't have to be perfect. And it's just going to give you a rough guide to work from when you are making your embroidered um, flowers. So once you've drawn those on, um, you can peel off the uh, templates. <coughs> and just put those to one side. And this is where, um, if you haven't, if you don't have pinking shears, this uh, template would have had zigzags all along the bottom, and you would have cut them out with your embroidery scissors on the felt. Um, what I'm going to do is use pinking shears, um, the zigzaggy ones, just to cut the hem of this dress. So I'm just going to um, carefully line this up. You want it to be right along that bottom edge. As you can see, it's just a lot quicker than um, cutting a lot of individual zigzags. Okay. And now you're ready to embroider the dress. We're going to embroider the dress with three strands of embroidery thread um, for all of the different stitches we're going to use. All of them use three strands. So I've separated three strands. Um, we're going to do the cream uh, petals first. And I've separated out three strands um, from a roughly 50 centimeter or 20 inch length of thread. Um, I have tied a knot in one end and threaded um, the other end through my needle. Um, to start off, we're going to make petals around this central circle. So um, start from the top of a petal. This just means that um, your knot 
is not going to be in the centre. There's going to be a lot of stitches going on here in the centre and you don't want a knot getting in the way of them. So the knot will be then held on the back at the outside. So bring your thread um, from the back to the front so that the knot holds there. And then you want to make, we're just using straight stitches for these petals. So they are literally stitch, come up at one place, go down at the other place and that is the, the entire stitch. So then go down, there again, my stitch is probably about six or seven millimetres, maybe um, a quarter to five eighths of an inch, um, I would guesstimate. But again, we want these to be really organic looking, so they really don't need to be perfect. Um, what I do to start with is I go round and I make maybe six to eight stitches just at different points around the circle and I make them different lengths because you want them to look like natural petals not all completely uniform and identical so you're going from the outside ending on the outer rim of that um, circle that you marked or if you're doing this freehand, you can just imagine a circle in the middle at the point where you're stitching. I don't use a hoop, as you can see for this, it's so small and the felt is quite um, thick, so you, you don't need to have a hoop. Um, and then you can just go round again and fill in all of those um, stitches to the middle. And I, as I say, I like to make mine different lengths as I go around, just to make them look more realistic, more like petals. And um, what doing these initial stitches the idea of that is that your stitches will then be more evenly spread. If you're just filling in a short gap between here, it's easier to arrange your stitches so that they end up looking, um, they have a better spread when you finish. If you tried to just start from one side and work your way all around, um, then you're more likely to go have some wobbly bits and or wobbly bits that you don't want as opposed to the wobbly bits that you do want. So you would just carry on um, and work your way around the circle until you've covered, um, until you've made all of the petals. And um, then you would do that. I would personally do all of the white petals on both pieces of, um, on both the back and the front pieces for the dress and then come back and do the next stage. I just want to show you how to fasten off um, a thread. You'll notice that I've stitched each flower, the petals for each flower, separately rather than carrying the thread from one to the other. Um, it just keeps the back neater. So once you come to the end of um, a flower, you're going to secure the end of the thread with a couple of back stitches. It's just um, more secure than just trying to tie a knot and get it close enough um, to the fabric so that your final stitch doesn't go all loose. So um, turn over the fabric run your needle under a few existing stitches nearby to where you've um, finished your final stitch then go back and make the exact same stitch again and make it one final third time but instead of pulling it all the way through you put your needle through that loop once and then through the loop again and then you pull it tight and it will make a nice tight knot and you can um, trim off the extra thread. Once you've stitched all the petals, you can start to uh, stitch the insides of the circles, and we're going to use um, French knots for this part. Um, you're using three strands of thread again um, in the golden olive color, not in the end, other end, uh, double knot in the end, other end threaded through the needle. Um, and to start off, you're going to run um, your needle behind a few stitches on the back of the fabric um, 
just so that your knot is going to get secured away from the middle. Um, again, you're going to be doing a lot of stitching in the middle, so you don't want a knot stuck in the middle of there um, to get in your way. Um, to do, uh, I'm using a piece of thread that is roughly 30 centimeters long, um, which is about, I think, 12 inches, roughly, a bit longer maybe. Um, and if you're using the kit, the threads, the green and the olive threads will come ready cut to that length. Um, it just means again that you don't need to then carry the thread from one flower to another, you've got the right amount of thread to be working with um, for one flower at a time. So to make a French knot, you come up from the back of the fabric, somewhere in the middle of the flower, and now you are going to hold the thread out of the way with your left hand, and with your right hand hold the needle and wrap the thread two times around the needle. Now go back near to where you came out of the fabric and push your needle in. Do that again, it comes unraveled quite easily. Push your needle back into the fabric near to where you came out and then pull the knot down to the base of the needle and make sure it's firmly um, wrapped around your needle, push the needle all the way through, pull it and you'll have a nice knot there. I just want to make sure you can see that properly. So I'll just do that again and you're going to just make a random collection of French knots in the middle here. So you come up out of the fabric, wrap the thread once, twice around your needle, Put the needle back in the uh, fabric near to where you came out, pull the thread down and tight around your needle and pull the needle through. And you're just going to make a cluster of those stitches um, to fill up that central point. You want them all kind of nestled together. Once you've um, filled all the centres of the flowers with French knots, um, you need to start to stitch the leaves. Um, to do this again we've got three strands um, about 30 centimetres long, um, 12 inches ish, um, with a double knot at the end. Um, to stitch the leaves you're just going to use these lines on the template as a guide. Um, you don't need anything to be precise so we're just going to gauge roughly so I'll do this centre one to begin with. So we've got one leaf coming underneath it. And to do the leaves, I'm just going to flip it upside down. You come out from the fabric at the base of the leaf. And then you're going to make one stitch. You, um, it can be as long as you, or as long or as short as you want really. Um, and I like to mix it up, so to have some really little leaves and some longer leaves, skinny ones, fat ones, um, anything goes really. And if you're not sure, if you want to practice a few on um, a piece of your scrap felt, then do do that until you're confident with how they how they look. But um, so in the first instance, you are going to draw uh, draw stitch a straight stitch, which is probably about. Uh, 77 or 8 millimetres long, so again about 5 eighths of an inch, um, and you want it to be at an angle. Basically we're going to imagine the centre of the leaf going down here, and the starts of all of your stitches are going to start in that imaginary centre. So we're going to do one, uh, one stitch, come up again in the middle, go out again at an angle, and then do a third one, but you're going to come from the top to the bottom this time. And you're, this one, we're going to imagine the leaf is kind of curving around to the left. And this is, the, so the, whichever way you want your leaf to bend, this is where you start the top of it. So I want mine to bend to the left. If you wanted yours to bend to the right, you would start over here somewhere. So this is our top of the leaf. And you're going to bring it down to just about where you finished your second, or where you started your second stitch rather, and put it in there. Now what you're going to do is come over to the right hand side 
and do two more stitches which are kind of the sister stitches to these ones and you're going to overlap them with the central um, over that imaginary central line so you're going to go slightly bring your needle just kind of scrape it between those two stitches and overlap the middle one slightly come down a bit more and again scrape over the middle slightly and make a third stitch which ends at the start point that your original stitch started and then you should have um, a nice little leaf. I'm just going to try and zoom in on this, it's going to make a horrendous noise so bear with me. There you go, so you've got kind of a plaited effect um, where the leaves overlap. So let me just do another one. Right, so we're going to refer to this diagram. So I've got one there, I want another one to come off here-ish. So we're going to start, come up around here, <coughs> make one stitch for the left hand side, go up along that imaginary line and make another stitch. Make the centre line, which I'm going to have it, rather than curve to the left, I'm going to have it pretty much straight up this time. And back to the middle. And then over this side, overlap the centre. Another stitch to overlap the centre line slightly further down. And the final one to meet the beginning of the first stitch. And then you just kind of make your way around um, making the assuming you're following the template, then you place the flowers uh, the leaves roughly where they are on your template. Otherwise you can just put them wherever you like um, have them just kind of spread around. I've got between three and five for each flower. Um, and have them spread around so it's like the flower is sitting on top of the leaves. Um, and for both the green stitches and for the French knots, again, you just finish the thread by running it under some stitches a couple of times and then doing the knot like I showed you um, before. And then that's all the embroidery. To make the dress, we are going to join the front and back pieces um, together and this, unlike the body pieces where all the seams were on the outside, for this um, for this dress the seams will be on the inside and we're going to sew along um, the two seams first. So you place um, the two, the front and back pieces, uh, front, right sides together, sorry, so that you can see the back of your embroidery on each side and um, just make sure you've got everything lined up. I'm going to use a couple of wonder clips just to hold these together while I stitch. You can pin it just like before and then I have got um, a piece of the blue embroidery thread and um, we are back to stitching with a single thickness doubled over with a loop at the ends for the knotless loop start. So if you've got the kit um, I would use the entire length. I would take one strand from the entire length of blue thread that you've got supplied um, with the kit. And then we are just going to stitch up these seams with um, a back stitch. So it doesn't matter wh whether you stitch this way or this way. I'm going to go this way just for the time being. So I'm going to, st I'm going to come up from the back and you want to be um, a few millimetres. So probably one sixteenth of an inch ish, maybe one to two, uh, one to two sixteenths of an inch away from the edge or two to three millimetres, slightly bigger seam than you did with the body seams and you're going to make one stitch, um, so come up, go back down and then come through the loop just to hold it fast and then we're going to start our back stitch, so to do back stitch you come up as though you were going to do a running stitch, so you've left a little gap and then you go back 
and put your needle through the fabric where your first stitch ended. Then you come up again a little way along and go back again. This is why it's called back stitch. So you're constantly going forwards then back, forwards then back. So um, all your stitches will be joined together on this side and on this side they'll all be overlapping. I don't know if you can see that very easily. Um, so you continue to do that all the way up to this armpit. Um, then secure the thread with a couple of stitches on top of each other, um, trim off the excess and do the same to sew this seam on the other side of the dress and then um, I will come back to you after I've done that and show you where to go next. Once you've sewn up the two side seams of the dress, you need to um, open it out and sort of finger press these seams open. Um, you don't have to be really hot on it, but it's just to help them lay a bit flatter. So just kind of, obviously they're very small seams, but you just want to press along that line to help them lay a bit flatter once they're open. So you can press on the outside, or inside rather, and then we're going to flip the dress inside out, or the right way out, I should say, and then you can press them a bit bit more. You want Basically, you want this seam to lay nice and flat rather than looking like it's folded inwards too much. So you can press it flat and then press it a bit more, folding it the right way round. And once you've done that, you're going to get your mouse and put the dress over her. Take um, your needle and another uh, doubled over strand of embroidery thread, the blue. Um, you want it to be about a metre long, um, which is around 40 centimetres. I'm just going to wrap the loop around her ears so it's out of our way for a minute. Um, and then you begin by joining up the two shoulder seams of the dress and start as though to do a blanket stitch. So in from the front, needle through the loop, pull it tight, make a couple of, couple of blanket stitches and then bring that to Cinder Mouse's shoulder and you're going to make one more stitch through her shoulder as well. It's going to hold the dress in place. And then once you've done that, actually let's do two stitches just for a bit of added security. So they're just whip stitches from one side to the other and through, I've caught the side there, through the body at the same time, through the body as well as the dress. And then you are going to um, do a running stitch, a very small running stitch all along the front. You can bend the arms out of the way wherever you need to. All along the front neckline of the dress. So you're going to be basically weaving your needle in and out just a few millimetres from the edge or one to two sixteenths of an inch, in and out. Pull a bit more thread through and this running stitch is basically going to work, uh, going to gather the dress around the front neckline. So you're just going to gather all the way around the front. So load a few stitches onto your needle. Pull the thread through, just leave the thread loose to start with. And take it right up to that second shoulder. And then place the shoulder parts together, 
like you did with the first shoulder. Then you're going to pull on this thread and it will gather the dress around the neckline. So I've just unthreaded my needle. So the dress is gathered. Get that um, second shoulder where you want it, lined up with the other side and then you make your whip stitch. So you do a couple on their own, just to join the two shoulders and then you can stitch them through the mouse's body like you did with the first time. So make sure you've got all your gathers as tight as you want them to be. And then stitch through the body. I don't know how easy this is to show you on the camera, but I will do my best. And then you're just going to do a running stitch all the way around the back neckline exactly the same as you did with the front with the front pull it tight um, secure the end of the stitches with a few sti uh, the end of the thread with a few stitches on top of each other um, and then with the final thread once you've done those few securing stitches you'll push the needle into the body and just come out anywhere such as that and snip off the excess thread <laughs> 